Major funding for My Talk to Science Kid is provided in part by the National Science Foundation, supporting education and research in science, mathematics, and technology, and by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by the annual financial support from viewers like you. Thank you. I'm my tech. I'm a human. I'm a human. I'm a human too. I'm a human too. Me too. Why don't you do the species? I don't see my other species. Oh, well, what about the grass? There's not enough biodiversity. That's my show about biodiversity. Right. Or left. Okay. My cat is science kid. My cat is science kid. No, 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 no. My cat is science kid. Science news! My cat is science kid! The new shirt is a puppet in the fly. My, 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 my cat is science kid. My, 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 my cat is science kid! This is the Earth, our world. All the living things that we know of live here, and they live in ecosystems, places like tundras, taigas, savannas, grasslands, prairies, deserts, groves, steppes, inner tidal zones, subtidal zones, continental shelves, deep ocean zones, estuaries, deciduous forests, temperate rainforests, tropical rainforests, arctic ice packs, wetlands, marine mudflats, and cities. That's a lot of environments, but there are a lot of living things to fill them up. The Earth's environments are just crowded with life. Living things take hold everywhere they can. There's an insect living right on top of blades of grass. But no insects are around here. It's a living thing that lives on other living things. See, environments always have living parts and non-living parts. Some animals live on top of plants. Some animals live in the water. Some plants grow on rocks, and some fruits grow on groves. It's all part of the ecosystem. Nearly three quarters of the world's surface is covered in water. And most of the world's living things live here. It's just one ecosystem after another. Now, here as we can tell, all living things depend on other living things. So the more different kinds of living things in the ecosystem, the more successful it is. We call this biodiversity different kinds of life. We can think of an ecosystem as this checkers, dominoes. See all the different species, they all fit together and they depend on each other to live. Now you know once in a while while the species will go extinct, it will disappear from the ecosystem. Now you can see how we could lose a few of those without too much trouble, but to start to lose too many. The whole thing becomes becomes a little rickety. Now a word of people fitting. Now look, they they fit in just about everywhere. Look just about anywhere you can walk, you'll find people living. Because people are living things and they're part of an ecosystem. So when we go to manage the ecosystem, we have to be careful about how things fit together, or there won't be a place for us. You must be very careful. Extremely careful. Warning, 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 warning. Now this hasn't happened yet, but it could. That was a good one. Ecosystems are a little bit like this game of marbles. Now you, you know, you can't take one marble out without disturbing most of the other ones. The things that live in ecosystems depend on each other. They're connected. That's kind of cool. Who and I 
in every little thing are part of an environment. Now, environments would have non-living things too, like uh, seawater, rock, sand, and silt. And in those non-living things will be living things like fungus and soil, or algae and water, or maybe your species that lives in a meadow. In anyway, it's important to realize how dependent plants and animals are to each other. They just don't seem to find one without the other. Living things in an ecosystem depend on other living things. We find that we can take one thing out. It's connected to the whole bunch of living things. So where does that lead our species? Where does that leave us? <laughs> Just kidding, sort of. This is the edge where the environment without humans comes up against the environment with humans. You know, humans introduce a lot of non-living things with the environment. But certain plants and animals do very well here because there's more sunlight for small plants and there's certain types of food that animals are able to find if they can't find easily under the places. It just changes things when humans show up. It's a choice that we make.